Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Hello, all of you. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? It's Tuesday and, uh, uh, well, I just finished a, well, hi, Greg John, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. I just finished a, a session and what an incredible session. It was so good that I was about to ask my client to come live with me, except he had to be at work in half an hour. And that's why we didn't have this time. But he promised me that uh, we're going to do a live session together and his testimonial is going to be live. And I, I love it. I love it when I've got clients who see results, immediate results. They feel good about not only what happened during the session, but uh, they feel good about themselves. Because at the end of the day, that's exactly what my intention is. You know, I always say, heal within is where transformation begins. So, hi, Mark. How are you? Uh, mm. So, how was your weekend? How was your week? On the scale of 1 to 10, how was your week? Just uh, let me know. Oh, good afternoon from Rosville, Tennessee. Yay, Tennessee. Well, I have my cousin's daughter that is, they live in Kansas. And I remember approximately seven, six, seven years ago, they came here for a visit from Kansas. And it was the first time they came to Los Angeles. And driving them from the airport towards my hometown where I am in Glendale, they, the kids were like in awe. All they saw was the sky rise from downtown and they were like so amazed. And then as we came closer to my hometown, all these beautiful hills and mountains and everything, we've got Mount Wilson here. So they had never seen mountains. And I was like, what's the big deal about it? And they said, Kansas, where they live, it's so flat. And I'm going, you mean flat? You mean no skyscrapers, no mountains? And they said, no. So you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of how much we are immersed in our life that we forget that other parts of the city, it could be city, other parts of the state is completely different. We are so immersed in our own cocoon that we really don't have much of an understanding or a concept of how other people live or what the environment is, any of that, unless we go traveling. And well, frankly, I have not been to Kansas. Maybe that's one of the things that I need to go is start a tour of America and pick one state or two states and go and see. I've been to New York, I've been to Chicago, I've been to Washington, Miami, uh, and of course, San Francisco, but that's in California. So I've been around California. Well, that's not true. Not, my, not many places. So I have a bucket list of traveling and seeing other places. So thank you, Mark, for always being. Hi, Tanya. How are you? How was your week? On the scale of one to 10, how was your week last week? Was it productive? Was it uh, uh, tumultuous? Was it a uh, struggle? Was it a happy one? I know for those of you who have kids, kids are getting ready to go back to school. Um, so many are going back to school on Friday and then they are off for two days and then they're gonna start on Monday. Uh, I don't understand this concept, but I'm sure there is a reason. And there are friends of mine that their children already started school and I know college starts in two weeks. So this must be difficult for some of the parents who have to juggle 
between uh, little kids and or high school and the ones that you have to take to college, right? So kudos to you, kudos to all of you. And Adrian says, we'll save a spot for you under the veranda in South Carolina. Ah, yes, I know you are gonna travel to South Carolina, I've heard. It's absolutely amazing. But don't they have a lot of like bugs and mosquitoes? You know, I don't like bugs. Um, yes, it's true. Even as a hypnotherapist, I help people overcome fears, fears, anxieties, phobic reactions, fear of flying, fear of driving, people who have gone into an accident. And, you know, if you didn't know, I'm sure you did. But did you realize that our muscles have memory and uh, like last week, I had a client who came in here uh, because it's like frozen and she's now afraid to go on the freeway. Uh, and to her, it was for no good reason. But she didn't realize that the accident that she had about seven, eight months ago was a trigger because right after the accident, she drove, she drove around the city and everything, and she didn't have anything to get on the freeway for. And by the time she got on the freeway, about a month later, she was, uh, she got out of the freeway right away within two exits because she thought she was going into a panic and anxiety. She got heart palpitation and everything. And then she thought it was because she ate something and it was not sitting well with her, not realizing it was the freeway itself. And then uh, about a week later, she had to get on the freeway to go and visit some friends of hers. And then she felt the panic come again. Uh, and then the third time, the fourth time, she stopped going, not recognizing it's not the freeway. The freeway hasn't changed, right? So it was something internal. And as she came for um, the panic and anxiety uh, that she cannot drive on the freeway and her, uh, her thing was the freeway is now the issue, it wasn't. Well, a part of the hypnotherapy is understanding, delving deeper within the cognitive understanding of what we think it is to peel away the layers and get to that part. What I like to call it, the relationship that we have with it. The same way as I have, um, I just dislike bugs, not necessarily bugs that fly. I don't care about them, but things that crawl. I don't like things that crawl. If they're crawling, I get disgusted. I have no fear. I don't go into panic and anxiety, but I get this disgust, right? So I, last week, I even posted that picture and I came hitting with a broom. I mean, literally overpowering this. Well, it was, uh, it was not a spider, but it was bigger than that. It had probably a thousand legs and it was still moving. So I beat it and beat it and beat it until it was not there. And then as my mom walked out, I said, pick it up because it was disgusting. If mom wasn't there, I would have, I had my glove on, I had the plastic, I would have picked it up and thrown it away, you know? Um, another person told me, and you think that's disgusting, but picking up after your dog is not disgusting. You know, it. that's what I'm calling. Everything is a perception. Everything is a perception. I think anxiety for one thing versus another is a perception. Overeating for someone versus another is a perception. Everything in our life, because what we think is beautiful and another person says where do you see the beauty in this is a perception uh traveling sightseeing someone spends the money on a purse and they say to me having this gives me satisfaction 
or eating this chocolate cake is so satisfying versus another person who gathers their money and for them is to go and travel, to sightsee, to experience, right? So there is no right. There is no wrong. I think, uh, yes, uh, kudos. So what is it <clears throat> that you like to do? I'll ask you, Mark, have you traveled to LA? Have you been to Los Angeles? And is it on your list to do traveling, you and your wife? And where do you go? What is a good experience for you? Or even Adrian? Or hi, Chris. How are you? How are you two doing there? I see the beautiful pictures with the grandkids and are the grandbaby, not the grandkids, but the little baby. So please give my best to family and our friend. Uh, hi, Carolyn. Uh, so we're talking about perceptions. We're talking about the work that I do in a way is help my clients shift. Uh, and sometimes it's not only affirmations. Affirmations, you can give affirmations until you're blue. But if you do not believe in what you say, it's not going to affect have that same deep effect. So how do we change that? It's changing the belief system, I call it. The BS, hmm, a different BS. But we all have a BS. Some of it is a, a, a BS that we just give ourselves, the excuses that we give ourselves in order to stay where we are. And the other one is to stand up for ourselves truly to stand up and say this cannot continue anymore because what i have done either packing it on or holding myself back from going on the freeway thinking that there is something bad is going to happen is in a way safeguarding safeguarding ourselves from the fear of what may happen if the anxiety that happened for that client of mine and after coming here on our second session she realized wow it's moving forward in life and if i were to move forward that means i'm going to get on the freeway now here is working with the subconscious is uh, that accident was another um, instant, another thing that added to it. But what we did was go back further, further than when the accident happened. How did it happen? What she was feeling when that happened? She was angry, what she was angry about. And going further and further, believe it or not, she went all the way back to 14 years before when she had had another accident and it had happened on the freeway and what had transpired then. Before that, it was another accident than when she was in high school. You see, what happens in a way is once we start peeling away our memory bank, we come to uh, an understanding. It's fruition. You know how I say evoke the past, embrace the present, and evolve to your future or what you, your desired goal? Not everything happens in the past because sometimes we have to embrace the past and evoke what is happening now. So in a way, the three E can be intermittent and not everything is about our past. Hmm. But a lot comes back to our blueprint, our beginning, our pattern, and how everything was established. So that said, the next day, not only she got on 
the freeway and she drove on her own, but she did a short one from one town to the next town. She got there, she called me and said, I did it. To her, the success of driving from one end to another city and, and realizing it had nothing to do with the freeway because she had accepted and through the work that we did through hypnosis, we also at the end did the guided visualization and the hypnosis after understanding, after peeling away, after she saw her patterns of, wow, I didn't realize that one had anything to do with it. One had another to do with it. It's a beautiful link. So in a way, our everything, that's why I like to find the relationship to the things that we think it's a block or the things that we are afraid of, the things that hold us back. And what is the relationship to that? Everything is a relationship. For those who smoke, what is the relationship to smoking? For those who take food and eat it and eat it to fill in. Hmm? So what is your relationship to the things that you have? And it can be everything that you choose to give you a sense of comfort. Some people stay home and they call themselves an introvert or they say, I am depressed, I can't come out. Um, I know I have a potential client that came in for a consultation and said that one of the biggest issues is that he gets into anxiety and because of the anxiety, he gets headaches. And when he gets headaches, he doesn't wanna go out. And this has been a pattern for many, many years. And when I asked him when, he said 15 years old, he, can re he could remember having headaches when he was 15. When he was just in junior high. So when something like that, and it's not that we are born with and when we recall having it at a certain time. And his passion, I also found out that it's music, it's being a DJ. So I asked him one question. When you are creating music, when you are burning, when you are DJing, is the headache there? And one tear. And he said, no. I never have headaches when I am DJing for someone or doing music for hours and hours. You see, when we are immersed in something we love, when we are immersed in something that makes us feel good, we are away from the pain and discomfort. That's a part of our core being. It will do everything to safeguard us and protect us. Everything is for us, not against us. It does, it's never there to hurt us. And yet the residual is what we feel as a hurt, what we feel as I am depressed, what we feel is I am now um, homebody because I am afraid to go out, but we become homebody because long time ago, whatever it was, staying home made us feel good. So when we recognize our relationship with either drinking, smoking, feeling that insomnia, being on guard, all this, then we come to realize, wow, 
I am so much more powerful. I didn't realize how much control and power I have over myself that without and acknowledging it without understanding or having this concept that the subconscious mind, which is the part of us that safeguards us, the parent part of us, always does everything to make us feel good, even if it is in a negative way. So, Wow, here's Mark. Awesome, Mrs. Thank you, Mark. You have been to New Orleans. Oh, I love New Orleans, you know. Uh, last time I was at New Orleans was, oh God, 20 years ago. And it was for my birthday, around my birthday. And I went there and it was during Mardi Gras. Oh, God, I remember the hurricane drinks. Yes, uh, you've been to... Mexico, New Mexico. Yes, I love New Mexico, especially Albuquerque area, Las Cruces area. Those are gorgeous, gorgeous. Apparently, I've been there. I forgot, completely forgot that I've been around there. Kentucky, I've never been there. The Derby. Have you been to the Derby? Uh, the Racehorse Derby? Did you ever go to that one? Dallas, Daytona, Florida. I've been to Daytona for a seminar. Yes, I've been to Florida and I didn't know. So Baltimore, yes. Nashville, yeah. Nashville where it's the home of Elvis Presley. So kudos to you for those travels. Uh, traveling is one of the most incredible experiences you get to see you get to experience you learn a lot of things and that's what i tell my clients i said the difference between meditation and hypnosis is in when we do meditation meditation is doing this zone mm, to go to that nothingness right that beautiful place of serenity and silence whereas hypnosis is a travel it's an experience to delve deeper within yourself to explore all your habits and behaviors and the patterns and to unravel them it's like a puzzle and you just have all this puzzle and then together we put it back or we find the puzzles to fit hmm is that a good way of explaining it? So you've been to Kentucky Derby Poultry. Gorgeous. Yes. Uh, one of my friends also has a horse that uh, they ran for this entire partnership. They ran their horse at the Derby. So, and sent me pictures. Maybe one day I'll go to the Derby as well. I want to be here for you so that i can help you with your relationships your relationships to anything that you feel it's a block or it's an understanding we create relationships in life with people and i've said this before we say i do to them sometimes before we say i do to ourselves um with that, my client I gave an example that even I had forgotten that I used to do this as children we do things that we don't realize what we do and I probably we do it so unconsciously even though we know what we're doing, we don't understand what we are doing. Or I should say, yes, exactly. Because kids do not understand the consequences, but they know whatever it is, it is good in their way. And it's again, a perception. So growing up, I'll talk about myself. I've said this many times that I used to get uh beat up i used to get spanked and you know i was a tomboy i would <laughs> playing with bb guns was nothing going up a tree falling i've got so many things i have broken arm i've had uh, 
my sternum cracked, uh, the bottom of my feet, I have cracked them, um, bones cracked, broken, literally tomboy. And I was not even in sports. I was just a tomboy playing, 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 playing. So being an only child, my mom did not know how to control this girl that is very much like a boy, wants to play like a boy and do things. So I used to get punished. The, their form of punishment, what they knew discipline then was to spank me and hit me. Um, after a while, a child gets immune to that, just like anything else, the same way as we get immune to certain people get immune to uh, dosage of drugs or alcohol or food or anything that we take it as uh, as a comfort system, as a protective mode. I got immune to the spankings, right? But I realized one thing. Long before that, one time my mom spanked me and I didn't know after she spanked me, I went around the corner. I saw her go to the bathroom and she sat and cried. I saw her crying. What I didn't understand until years later as an adult that she hated spanking me. She did. She really did not want to do that. It hurt her more to hit me than it affected me. But I didn't see it that way. I thought it was a punishment, but to her it was like she didn't know how else to control me, right? So because I didn't know that, I thought I'm going to show her a lesson. So this little kid would become more um, instigating to hit so she would cry. And to me, it was, oh, I'm going to show you. So I would make her cry as a punishment to her for hitting me until years later when I hugged her and I said, I never realized how much it hurt you as much as it hurt me. So most times, what we think we are doing as a punishment or as a safeguard, we really don't have an understanding it until we unravel the puzzle pieces and get to the feeling of it. And through cognitive speaking sometimes we don't get there until we have someone guiding us and showing us uh, either a therapist or someone who knows how to hold space for you or just step aside from that environment to see and guide you for you to see and when we repeat something like that, it's so good for us to stop and see where did we get this pattern? Where did I come up with this behavior? And is this benefiting me? Is this hurting me? Is this hurting someone else that I love so much? So I'm going to leave you with that. And if there is uh, something that you would like to share, I would love for you to share. Have you done something that has affected in a negative way, which you thought it was the right thing? And how has that affected you and what helped you overcome it. I would love to hear your messages and for you to share it. So today, today's message has been the things we do without understanding, not realizing how much 
at one time it has benefited us and it no longer has the same benefit or meaning. And we can just let it go and begin the transformation because change only begins with us. With us becoming more aware, more clear of why we do, how we do, and what is our relationship with what we do. That's when the switch goes on. Yes? Yes. So I hope today's message was beneficial to you, even though I had talked about my experiences. And today we have a loving relationship with my mom. And I hope you too have a better relationship with yourself and realize everybody has had good days, bad days, hard days, and it's a roller coaster, and that's where we, excitement is in life. But we can turn that roller coaster into beautiful waves instead of a, trauma, uh, a, a tornado or an avalanche. Until we speak again and come together, I wish you an incredible week. Travel, experience, and know that who you are is the best within you. And we can always become better. So God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Until next week. Bye-bye. You're welcome, Adrian. Bye, Mark.